Good evening, everybody. Uh, looks like uh, we're just about ready to go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, this is the research celebration, the third annual research celebration. In case you got off on the I-49 exit erroneously, this is the correct place to be. Um, I really am delighted to see so many people here tonight. Uh, usually we have this event in February of, of typical years, but obviously because of the pandemic, we had to uh, revise that. But fortunately, we've all had the vaccine, I do believe, or at least a large majority of us have. And if you don't or haven't, then you can go down to Chevy Land and get it, so please don't, don't forget that. Um, but really, what I wanted to do tonight, uh, before we get into the celebration part of it, is really kind of give everybody an idea of why we're here this evening. So, I know this slide goes without saying to most people in this room, uh, but one of the things that's really critical, why are we here? We're here to celebrate research, and research is very, very important for so many different reasons. Uh, one of the things I think we saw this year is that research actually serves the local and state communities. Uh, you'll see some videos and you'll hear some stories later on about how being in the vicinity of an academic medical center really makes a big difference in the community. The uh, second thing is that development of much needed medical devices, new drug discoveries. We've heard a lot about drug discoveries that have come out of this institution. We'll hear more about patents and intellectual property. Uh, and so that's really critical, as well as treatment modalities. Many of our clinical uh, scientists and clinical colleagues came up with really groundbreaking ways to treat individuals that were severely ill. More importantly, the U.S. government supports research, uh, typically when private sector doesn't have either the mission or the bandwidth to do that. And that's important for many reasons, because oftentimes discovery research is a very cash-intensive process, and so we engage with the federal government as well as the state government to do that. And more importantly, that contributes to the economic development of our region. So I think everyone in here understands the importance of economic development, uh, and that happens across the board. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our acting chancellor, Dr. David Lewis, to say a few words. Dr. Lewis. Thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, research is at the heart of a health science center, and uh, we are truly blessed to have many great researchers in this room. Uh, led by Dr. Kevill and, and five uh, awesome uh, basic science chairs that have recruited just some incredible people. And uh, I'm not going to steal anybody's thunder. I'm sure uh, some numbers are going to be thrown at you guys at some point in the near future here. Uh, and I don't want to do that. But I would like to say that this is at the heart of what we do and what separates us from other institutions. Uh, and ultimately will make the big difference in, in curing diseases. And um, uh, I was uh, actually in Baton Rouge last night discussing cancer with a number of our legislators and uh, talking about the high incidence up here in North Louisiana and how we had plans to make big changes in both healthcare but also in the research uh, going forward. And so uh, I just want to welcome everybody to the Health Science Center and to this beautiful atrium. And uh, I want to congratulate the winners. Um, it truly is uh, remarkable, some of the work that's come out of here, uh, things like the EBT lab and other things that really have set the pace, not only in the state, not only nationally, but internationally. There are things that, that have come out of this Health Science Center in the last year that truly are making a major difference uh, in the fight against COVID, for instance. And so I'm sure there's going to be some discussion about that, but I want to welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis, for that, uh, that address. So as he just mentioned, he's absolutely right. I'm going to throw some numbers at you. <laughs> Appreciate the tea up there. So um, one of the things that is really key, uh, and, and I would be remiss if I didn't say it, is that, um, as Dr. Lewis said, the whole institution. Dr. Lewis, myself, Dr. Fox, Dr. Ghali, all of us have understood and, and embraced and cherished the importance of research for our institution. So you can see from this slide, some of you may not be able to read it, we get funding from various federal sources, uh, much 
of that comes from the National Institutes of Health. However, we also now get funding from the Department of Defense, as well as NASA, which is a National Aeronautic Space Administration, which actually up until a couple of years ago, we really never had. And so many of our faculty are pioneering what will be eventually space medicine. Uh, and then more importantly, the National Science Foundation, which really does fund fundamental principle research. But I think the thing that really is most telling, and I can't use the pointer because it's a TV and not a screen, is that uh, you can see this graph, this line graph off to the uh, to, to the left, right, depending on where you're looking at it. And you can see that research on our campus has grown over 295% over the past five years. That is huge. Everybody in this room deserves a round of applause. Because that would not be, that would not be possible at all without the work and activity of each and every one of you here in this room. So one of the key things that's also critical to appreciate <clears throat> is that when we do this research, we discover new things. And so discovering new things is what helps drive the economy and the engines of not only our nation, but also our state and our, our region. So uh, here at LSU Health Shreveport, we've actually had a rich history in terms of innovation and technology transfer. And these numbers, again, show uh, a lot of details about what we've accomplished, which a lot of them include a lot of US patents being issued. You'll hear about that a little later on from Ms. and Ellen Nelson, and that's a really big deal, because just like when you get NIH grants, getting a US patent is no small feat. And actually, those US patents are then licensed out to companies, and that ends up bringing royalties back into the institution. As you can see here, total licensing income uh, over the years that we've been doing this now is well over six million dollars and continues to grow. So much so that we're still number two in the LSU system in terms of licensing technologies and royalties. So that's a really exciting and also uh, wonderful accomplishment. Please, to all the in inventors. So the other thing that I think everyone in here has seen uh, kind of materialize over the past four to five years is that we have really broke down silos, which they're silos in an institution, you tend to build silos. We have broke down silos and we've begun to cross communicate and collaborate with one another. We're doing that not only internally, but we're doing that with the private sector in public-private partnerships. And so that's really exciting. And what that's resulted in is now the creation of six centers four of which are centers of excellence. And I'll tell you why that's important. Because the LSU system, the Board of Supervisors, has to first approve that you are designated as a center of excellence. And then the Louisiana Board of Regents has to ratify that, has to agree. And to be a center of excellence, you have to have a pretty high bar of achievements and accomplishments. And you'll see why one of our more recent centers, now the Center of Excellence for Emerging Viral Threats, uh, actually received that in probably the shortest time frame we've ever had one do that. Uh, and there's good reason why. However, that's not to say that the other centers of excellence, which is the Center for Excellence Arthritis and Rheumatology, the Feiswater Cancer Center, and the Cardiovascular Center, those are all three incredible centers doing a lot of fantastic work. And then our other two centers that are relatively newer, which is our Center for Brain Health, as you'll see later on, is doing some fantastic work, as well as the Louisiana Addiction Research Center. So again, all of these things are going back and helping the community with the needs that they have. To give you some perspective, there's been well over 45 individuals that have been actively involved in making this lab a reality in 12 days. And this, by the way, has received certification and approval from CMS, CLIA, and CDC. So we really are ready now as an institution to take the fight to the virus in conjunction with our clinical partner, Ashner, and really begin to move the needle in taking care of individuals here in Louisiana. When it was started, the Emerging Viral Threat Lab was set up as a diagnostic lab for detection of the coronavirus 
in the community. That lab really morphed into a larger entity, which is now the center of emerging viral threats. It's really the center of excellence awarded by the LSU uh, system. And that includes not just the lab, but also viral diagnostics, which is in the lab, sequencing for variants, elements of outreach for education, wastewater surveillance, the vaccine distribution. So it's really as a center, it's, it has multiple facets that are essential to public health for our community, region, and the state. The EVT strike team took COVID-19 testing into the community. Nursing homes, churches, schools, and sporting venues all became testing sites with samples brought back to the EVT lab for processing. Over the last year, the lab created over 300,000 test kits and processed samples from 58 of 64 parishes across Louisiana. Researchers at LSU Health Report were also leading the way on treatment working on multiple clinical trials and participating in the Pfizer vaccine trial, the only one in north central Louisiana. As vaccines began to be approved, the now Center for Excellence of Emerging Viral Threats, or CEVT, expanded into vaccine distribution. LSU Health Report was an early adopter of large drive through vaccination sites, like the one at the Louisiana State Fairgrounds, and smaller pop-up locations across north Louisiana. LSU HS even partnered with local hospitals to make a large number of doses more accessible to the community. As LSU Health Shreveport leads the fight against COVID-19, the cities of Shreveport and Bossier City have honored the efforts with awards from the Bossier Chamber of Commerce and the declaration of LSU Health Shreveport Day by the city of Shreveport. I, Adrian Dwayne Perkins, Mayor of Shreveport, do hereby proclaim Friday, December 18th, 2020 as LSU Health Shreveport Day. As the pandemic draws on, the CEVT continues to test and vaccinate while moving into a third stage. Genetic sequencing of COVID-19 in cooperation with national and international efforts to better understand the virus, enable epidemiology work, and inform future vaccine efforts. In essence, we were generating lots of diagnostic results, and as you're generating those results, we had all these RNA samples that had to be purified from patient samples to make a diagnosis and they were just sitting in our freezers. And so I just said, hey, let's sequence days. And luckily the answer was yes, get it done. LSU Health Shreveport is the only academic center in Louisiana with this capacity. You know, we have been leaders, absolute leaders in sequencing Louisiana viruses. I think we did over 95% of all the sequence data from the month of December 2020. Overall, we've done about just under 65% of the total sequence data on the coronavirus from Louisiana. The sequencing has led to the discovery of new variants that are now circulating around the world. The issue is if you don't sequence, you don't know about these changes in the spike protein that may be making the virus a little more infectious for people and maybe of greater concern to the general public may make vaccines a little bit less effective. As the COVID-19 pandemic began in March of 2020, LSU Health Report quickly turned the idea of helping to fight COVID-19 into real-world action, the creation of the Emerging Viral Threats Lab. And now, one year later, the Center of Excellence for Emerging Viral Threats is leading the way in the fight against COVID-19 and stands ready to face the next challenge. It's really been fascinating to watch this develop. It's been fascinating to work with all these wonderful people to get to the point where I think we are better off as a university and I'm hoping that what we have built and where we are going will make this, you know, our medical school, make our city, our region, and our state a better place going forward. Uh -huh. Very good. I hope that gives you a little bit of perspective about what the EVT lab has accomplished in such a short period of time. However, I would be remiss if I didn't thank many of the individuals that made this a reality. There's far too many people in the LSU system alone to name, but one of the things that's been instrumental was that uh, Governor John Bell Edwards was really critical with a lot of emergency proclamations that allowed this lab to happen so quickly. The Caddo Parish Commission was absolutely essential in the early stages to be able to get out into the community so that we could do testing for all individuals that are in great need. And then also the city of Shreveport. So uh, hats off to everybody in this room. We couldn't have done it without you. So before we get to the awards, one of the things that, that we're going to take a moment and do now is because it's very unique is that the Center for Emerging Viral Threats 
uh, has run, as of today, more than 314,580 PCR diagnostic tests. We have had 7,486 positives. We have sequenced 2,430 viral positives, representing approximately 60% of all of the sequence that comes from the state of Louisiana. At one point, as Dr. Camille said earlier in the video in December, we were it in the Southeast, ladies and gentlemen. That was it, period. Uh, so much so that a, a website called GISAID uh, that Dr. Camille and members of the, the data team formed a great relationship with had our own build for the state of Louisiana on an international web page that everybody was going to to learn about variants. So that, when Dr. Lewis says we made an international impact, is clearly without a doubt. The number of parishes that we've tested has been 58 out of 64 parishes in the state of Louisiana. Early on in the pandemic, we really were one of the only shops to be able to go ahead and do some testing because a lot of the testing in the clinical labs wasn't available because many of those kits were not working. However, one of the things I think I'm most heartened by and proud of is that initially when we started this, the region was around 25 to 30 percent positive virus. Today, we're at 0.24 percent positivity. That's huge. That's huge. So again, that is a testament to, to all the hard work. And so one of the things that our legislatures realized is that uh, that needs to be recognized. And so we'll take a moment to recognize through a legislative proclamation that actually was issued in January. Unfortunately, we couldn't give it to everybody in January because we were in the throes of the, the, the height of the second surge. But now is the time to recognize everybody. So if you're here and I call out your name, please come up here uh, and grab the, um, the proclamation uh, and stay up here because we're going to get a picture. I will not read you the resolution because we'll be here for the rest of the whole period, but I'll read the names. Whereas LSU Health Science Center in Shreveport, through its leaders, Chancellor G.E. Ghali and Vice Chancellor Chris Kevill, as well as its faculty members, Dr. Stephen Alexander, Dr. Connie Arnold, Dr. Michelle Arnold, Dr. Steve Bailey, Dr. Ricky Bass, Dr. Jason Bodley, Dr. Stephen Conrad, Dr. Angela Cornelius, um, Dr. Alexander, I see you there in the wings. Please come on up, sir. Um, he doesn't want to be the first one up, I think. Uh, Dr. Terry Davis, I did see you here earlier. Please, ma'am, come on up. Um, Dr. Ellen Friday, Dr. Robert Holliday. I saw Bob earlier. Uh, yes, give her Connie's as well. Uh, Dr. Stan Ivanoff. Stan, are you here? There's Dr. Friday coming. Dr. Jeremy Camille, right down there. Uh, Dr. Wayne Orr, Dr. Martin Sapp, Dr. Keith Scott. I saw that gentleman around as well. Dr. Rona Scott. Dr. Jennifer Singh, Dr. John Vancheri, Dr. Bob Walter, are you here, Bob? Uh, Dr. Paul Weinberger, Dr. Matthew Woolard, and then Dr. Andrew Urajko. So now we get to the good stuff, the things that everybody wants to know about. So. Um, we're really delighted tonight to uh, highlight the work of many of our faculty. And as you can imagine, uh, a lot of it is uh, influenced by COVID-19. However, not all of it. So I think you're going to find that there's a lot of excitement there. So the first award I will be presenting is for the Excellence in Extramural Funding Award. Um, this goes this year to Dr. Andrew Urochko, and you'll see why in a moment. Dr. Rochko is a professor of microbiology and immunology and the Carol Feist Endowed Chair of Viral Oncology and is the principal investigator for the recently received five-year COBRE grant for $10,529,128 from NIH to establish the Center for Applied Immunology and Pathological Processes. This is a third COBRE to our institution uh, and the goal of this COBRE is to grow, recruit, and retain new research talent, expand existing research, and grow infrastructure using new equipment and expertise 
fostering more collaborations amongst the institution and across the state. It's really important because the CIAPP, that's a mouthful, will advance new insights in understanding how immune responses work during both health and disease, and I think we saw that this year with COVID. Um, but more importantly, the receipt of this new COBRE signifies that LSU Health Science uh, Shreveport is a burgeoning environment and institution that is growing rapidly and developing across the region, the South, and the nation. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Urochko. Yeah, it, it's a little heavy, so if you grab it, you know, it might, uh, it might, might leave a mark. So um, the next award that we have is uh, Excellence in Translational Research, and Mr. John Malloy, uh, the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Research Management, will present that award. The use of nitric oxide is a well-established treatment modality for respiratory failure in newborns. Given that COVID-19 is a respiratory virus, many in the medical and research communities began to wonder if inhaled nitric oxide might also work in adult patients. As the pandemic began, Drs. Keith Scott and Stephen Conrad were invited to join two multi-center clinical trials being conducted at Harvard's Massachusetts General Hospital with Dr. Lorenzo Barra and his research team. LSU Health Shreveport became a study site for these trials. These new clinical trials used nitric oxide as a treatment for COVID-19. The first trial monitored hospitalized patients with mild to moderate cases of COVID-19 to see how they responded to daily treatments. Subjects were treated for 30 minutes twice a day for up to 14 days while they were in the hospital. This trial enrolled 62 subjects at four U.S. sites with promising results. Inhaled nitric oxide promptly improved the respiratory rate of <coughs> tachypneic patients and systemic oxygenation of hypox hypoxemic patients. The second trial targeted severely ill patients that were on mechanical ventilation. At that time, our partner hospital experienced its highest hospitalization rate and had to increase the number of ICU beds. In this trial, high doses of nitric oxide were administered continually while the patient was on the ventilator. Inhaled nitric oxide was administered continuously for up to 28 days or until the subject was no longer hypoxemic. 200 subjects were enrolled in the trial and statistical analysis of the results is being conducted now. The dedication to the care of the citizens of our city, parish, and state exhibited by Drs. Conrad and Scott, their extensive medical knowledge, and their considerable research expertise have literally saved lives. Without their work, the pandemic could have been much worse. And I would again, uh, ask you to help us congratulate Dr. Keith Scott and Dr. Stephen Conrad, this year's co-recipients of the Excellence in Translational Research Award. And now Ms. Anella Nelson, the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Research Development, will present the Excellence in Innovation Award. Good evening. We're so glad to have everybody here tonight. Uh, first of all, it's my honor to present the 2021 Excellence in Innovation Award to two of our faculty members, Dr. Nick Getters and Dr. Chris Smouts, both members of the Department of Pharmacology, Toxicology, and Neuroscience. The American public is facing unprecedented levels of alcohol and drug addiction following the COVID-19 pandemic. Limited access to addiction treatment, healthcare worker stress, family strain and feelings of helplessness in assisting your family members, and uncertainty about the future all compound this problem that leads to anxiety, insomnia, depression, and PTSD, and isolation. All of which can produce increases in alcoholism and drug addiction. We are proud to have two LSU faculty members that were recently granted a patent from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for their novel invention entitled 
devices and methods of treating methamphetamine addiction and medical and behavioral consequences of methamphetamine use and that of HIV infection. This patent embodies a method of treating a human condition, condition that involves a translocator protein, KDA, called TSPO, wherein the condition is one of a chronic methamphetamine addiction, a medical condition that results from methamphetamine use. Dr. Getters is chair of the Pharmacology, Toxicology, Neuroscience, Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine, and also he is the Executive Director of the Louisiana Addiction Research Center. For more than 14 years, his laboratory research primarily involved investigations of neurobiological of drug reinforcement for addictive disorders, such as cocaine addiction and the effects of methamphetamine. Dr. Getters also co-founded a company called Embera Neurotherapeutics, Inc. This biotech company is currently conducting a number of clinical trials regarding addictive disorders. Dr. Smouts is an assistant professor in the Department of Pharmacology, Toxicology, and Neuroscience. His research interests include the evaluation of neuropharmacological therapeutics through advanced behavioral and neurochemical techniques. Join me in congratulating Dr. Getters and Dr. Smouts. We appreciate your dedication to addiction research, and it should be commended. Now I'd like to turn the program back over to Dr. Kevin. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. So the next two awards um, really uh, stem from something that many of us in the, in the institution and across the nation have begun to appreciate and understand, and that's impact. Impact is a real hard thing to measure. Um, and in fact, what we did last year when we had this inaugural award was look at things such as the number of citations that a publication had received. However, this year, it was not hard to determine impact. In fact, this year, it couldn't have been clearer. So we're really honored tonight to um, recognize two faculty that have just really gone above and beyond. And I'll tell you a little bit about them both. The first is Dr. Rona Scott. Dr. Scott is an associate professor and the Ming-Yu Ding Professor of Microbiology and Immunology. Dr. Scott played a vital role in helping to launch the EVT lab through her tireless efforts, and I mean tireless. There were nights, weekends, uh, poor Dr. Scott. Uh, she, she and Dr. Urochko have some, some kids, and I think they began to wonder where their mama was living up at the lab the whole time. Uh, and she was phenomenal in conjunction with many others. Dr. Scott's keen attention to detail and outstanding molecular biology skills were critical not only for starting the lab, but more importantly, enabling it to grow to where it is today. Just to give you an example, initially she reminds me, she goes, Chris, I told you we were only gonna commit to about 20 or 40 tests a week. We got to a peak, ladies and gentlemen, of 9,500 tests a week. That couldn't have been possible without Dr. Scott and the whole team. Importantly, Dr. Scott's expertise in genomic sequencing uh, enabled the CEVT to dramatically expand viral sequencing capacity here on campus that's essential as we move forward to future phases of pandemic management and preparedness for future threats. So our second honoree is Dr. Jeremy Camille. Dr. Camille is an associate professor of microbiology and immunology and has played a key role in leading COVID-19 sequencing efforts during the pandemic. In fact, through collaborations across the nation with the University of Pittsburgh Medical College, the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and many others, sequencing efforts here at this institution began very soon after the EVT lab began running samples. And that really wouldn't have been possible without Dr. Camille, as well as Dr. Scott. And I'll tell you, April of 2020 was when we began to start doing sequencing. Dr. Camille has served as an outstanding representative of the institution through his numerous media interviews and podcasts with the outlets such as the New York Times, Nature, NPR, BBC Science in Action, Australian Broadcast Channel, CBS Evening News, NBC National Affiliate Stations, Newsweek, Bloomberg, BBC India, and I could go on. In fact, he's our Louisiana Sanjay Gupta, if you will. He is the guy that people go to to talk about virology. I won't call you a neurosurgeon, I promise. But he is certainly on par with Dr. Gupta. 
His collaborative work with the EVT data analytics team, which certainly deserve a, a big round of applause, uh, really led to the identification of a novel Louisiana COVID variant named Pelican, suitably enough, along with others in the United States, and led to an understanding of how the virus made its way initially into Louisiana through New Orleans and back out. And without the effort of these two distinguished scientists, truly we wouldn't have an understanding that we do today regarding the virus. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Scott and Camille for their exemplary basic science research. All right, so our next Scientific Research Impact Award winner tonight is Dr. Angela Cornelius for Clinical Science. One of the things that's clear with an academic medical center is you can't have one without the other. It's like, you know, yin and yang, they go together. Um, and Dr. Cornelius uh, is really incredible in this past year and what she's done. A little bit of background about Dr. Cornelius. She's an associate professor of emergency medicine. And as COVID-19 virus began to take its toll on Louisiana, Dr. Cornelius led a strike team that was deployed from Oshner LSU Shreveport to New Orleans to help with their patient load. Little research existed regarding factors at that time that are associated with poor prognosis, and her team and she began to work on that problem immediately. Their study, Prognostic Factors in COVID-19, specifically examined the risk factors for poor prognosis in the United States and their association with certain admission labs, vital signs, or conditions as they relate to increased morbidity and mortality. So in other words, severity, disease, or death. The team studied all patients with positive COVID tests between the 1st of March and May, the end of May, at West Jefferson Medical Center. And in fact, you see the team there uh, where they spent the first week in NOLA, but not a time that you would necessarily want to go and have a good time in NOLA. Uh, and more importantly, they spent more time here in Shreveport at OLHS uh, LSU, as well as uh, uh, OLSU in Monroe. The team collected lab values and admission vitals on over 1,400 patients. Their findings had an invaluable impact on management of COVID-19 patients and is currently in preparation for publication. Unfortunately, Dr. Cornelius is not able to join us tonight, but uh, Dr. Axel Rodriguez Rosa uh, will accept the honor on, on her behalf as well as the team. Please join me in congratulating them. Okay, so uh, we're coming to the last award here of the evening, uh, last but certainly not least, and to introduce the award winners, uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Ms. Michelle Cavanaugh. Uh, she is with our research team and is the Executive uh, Finance Administrator for Research. She helps us make sure we stay in the bottom line and we stay right so we can continue to do all the wonderful things that we do here. Ms. Cavanaugh. Thank you, Dr. Cavill. It's an honor tonight to present the 2021 Community Champions Award. This award was envisioned to honor individuals who have positively affected research in our community. This year, we are recognizing both an LSU employee and multiple community members. We work together to deliver an extraordinary impact for research on our campus. The impact of this donation for research is realized as our expanded clinical trials office and the Pfizer vaccine clinical trials office are now located at this facility. Tonight, we are recognizing the individuals who secured an important and beloved 18-acre parcel in the heart of the Highland neighborhood, formerly known as Christus Shumpert. In 2017, when Christus offered to donate the property to LSU Health Shreveport to enhance its education and research mission, Dr. Ghali was very enthusiastic and reached out to community partners to assist in securing this opportunity. This visionary community, these visionary community citizens quickly established a nonprofit, Margaret Place Properties. This nonprofit was able to accept not only the property's donation, but also a $6 million cash donation. This cash donation 
was to cover the expense of maintaining the property until tenants could be secured. Their respective knowledge and talents as doctors, lawyers, business owners, and leaders in the healthcare industry made these four individuals the ideal recipients of this year's Community Champions Award. With the board members of the Margaret Place Properties, Mr. Bill Comages, Mr. Ray Lassane, Mr. Matthew St. Amant, and Dr. Golly, please come forward to accept the 2021 Community Championship Award. We thank these leaders for the work they have done to support the research at LSU Health Shreveport. So congratulations to everyone and all the award winners. And, and I'd like to echo Ms. Kavanaugh's uh, sentiment about the Margaret Place properties. For those of you that may not know why is that building so important, clinical trials research here um, had fits and starts where it was beginning. Now it is about to roar and explode. And the only way it could have roared and now begin to explode is by having that facility there. Being able to do the Pfizer clinical trial that Dr. John Van Cherry ran was indispensable for us as a community to open up mass vaccination sites here in Treeport Bossier far earlier than any other place in, the, in Louisiana for sure, but certainly in the southern United States. So um, a building is really important and it's been fantastic to see it. So what about the future? So there's a whole lot. We know COVID's with us. We know we're mitigating against COVID. We got a plan, that's a good thing, but there's a whole lot to be done. And so to begin with, I'd like to introduce somebody new to our campus that you may not have met, and I'll call her to the stage here in a moment, but she is just simply awesome. I am super excited to tell you about Dr. Sarah Thayer, who is our new director of the Feisweiler Cancer Center. Dr. Thayer comes to us with an incredibly distinguished record of surgical oncology, uh, clinical care, as well as research. She really has pioneered areas of pancreatic and breast cancer research. Uh, she originally received her medical degree at the University of Virginia School of Medicine, went on to do her residency at Harvard Mass General, and then went on to get her PhD and let me tell you, that's, that's, that's a high bar right there, MD and PhD at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, where she also completed a fellowship. Uh, we are just ecstatic to have her here on campus and her energy is infectious and her vision and her, her uh, enthusiasm for cancer care and cancer research are really gonna take the campus by storm. Dr. Thayer, please come to the stage. Well, thank you, Dr. Kevill, for such a wonderful introduction. And certainly when I was asked to come up here and say a few words, I certainly didn't know that I was going to be included in such a wonderful roundup of, of the most outstanding researchers. And certainly I am honored uh, to be included in this group. As Dr. Kevill mentioned, uh, I am a surgeon scientist. And cer certainly being a surgeon scientist, I understand the importance of research to our patients and our community because it is that research that we do every day which is the foundation of tomorrow's cures. Now, you know, I've always had a wonderful dream and I'm so honored to be part of the Feisweiler family. I've always had a vision that we would be stronger together and certainly uh, Feisweiler has given me an opportunity to finally build a truly integrated cancer center. Not only will we will be offering state-of-the-art cancer care, but most importantly, we'll be integrating that with the research, which ultimately will be, be the foundations for tomorrow's better treatments. So I am ultimately incredibly honored to be included in this group. Certainly, I am astounded at the achievements of uh, this last past year and can only say that uh, I look forward to working with each and every one of you as we move quickly forward to NIH Cancer Center designation, which is also another wish. But in any case, again, very thank you very much. It's been a great uh, honor. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Thayer. Uh, in addition, we are continuing to recruit some of the best talent in the nation. 
And there's three individuals I'd like to call your attention to. Uh, some of them are here, actually, in the audience. Uh, and we are truly honored to have them. The first is Dr. Art Yurtigal, who's an assistant professor in the Department of Molecular Biology, uh, excuse me, Molecular and Cellular Physiology. Boy, that, that's a sin for me to say, isn't it? People who know me will know what I mean by that. Um, and, and the thing that's amazing about this is that we are fortunate to have brought home one of our own. Dr. Yurtigal was a graduate student here many years ago, just a ball of fire graduate student in the laboratory of Dr. Wayne Orr, won the Chancellor's Award, went up to Columbia, knocked it out of the park, just recently had a cell metabolism paper, and of all places, we said, come home, Art, and he said, okay. That's huge, ladies and gentlemen. There are so many campuses that wanted to get this fella in their midst that it's a testament to the great things that are here. So welcome home, Art. Another recent addition to the Department of Molecular and Cellular Physiology, I got it right that time, is Dr. Chang Wong Park. He comes to us from Emory University. Dr. Park is equally fantastic and equally talented. Uh, his research really looks at how blood vessels grow and studies something called signal transduction. For many of you, if you looked at it, you'd say it's alphabet soup. But in reality, it's some of the fundamental principles of how cells communicate with one another to actually grow and develop. So we're really excited of having Dr. Park here because while he was at Emory, he worked with, again, some of the best and the brightest in the nation and brings to our campus insight that only a few campuses truly have. And really, we're quite honored to have Dr. Park here with us as well. And last but certainly not least uh, is Dr. Oren Ram. So Dr. Rahm is a new assistant professor in the Department of Pathology, uh, and he comes to us from the University of Michigan. We were really excited uh, in the Department of Pathology to have uh, many interested candidates in the cardiovascular space, but really Dr. Rahm is really leading uh, the front edge of metabolism research and how it affects things such as heart failure. These three gentlemen alone in my mind, represent the future of cardiovascular research here at LSU Health Science Center, and in fact, in the nation. So much so that the National Institutes of Health has sought the same thing, where they have bestowed grants on all three of these gentlemen already. So you can see now that the research here at LSU is hitting certainly beyond third gear, fourth gear, probably starting, and we're looking for the fifth gear. So welcome, Dr. Rahm. So while we've had a challenging year, we still have pushed forward research in many different fronts. And you probably can't read this slide, and for that I apologize, but one of the things I want you to take away from it is, that's a lot of text because we've done a lot of things. And this is in conjunction with Oshner and our Oshner LSU HSC research collaboration. We've established a collaborative intramural research program called CIRP that has led to partnering scientists from our institution with scientists down at Osher in New Orleans. This has been fantastic because it's ran the gamut of everything from Alzheimer's and dementia to cardiovascular disease to cancer. In addition, the first bullet point up there is we've really engaged in team science with Oshner's uh, Center, uh, Brain Center and our Center for Brain Health doing collaborative grant submissions to study Alzheimer's disease pathology across the state of Louisiana. We truly believe that by collaborating together in the North and in the South, we're able to bookend the whole state of Louisiana and take care of our citizens in a way that no one's done before. But more importantly, is that we gotta transition that to the clinic. So the last bullet point that you see down here is one of the more recent dual clinical trials that have been started in New Orleans and in Shreveport involving Dr. Pari Dominic, who is here in the audience, that's looking at uh, single versus dual direct cardioablation, a lot of technical jargon, to basically help people figure out best ways to treat atrial fibrillation. Again, We've got basic science research collaborations, clinical science research collaborations, and this is really gonna benefit the whole of Louisiana. So thank you to all these investigators. So 
we're almost at the very last slide, and I want to point out some things here that I think that blew me away recently, something that I did not anticipate. And the first bullet item is U.S. News and World Report Best Graduate Schools 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ranked, and everybody's silent. That's a huge deal, y'all. <laughs> The reason why that's a huge deal is that we are a smaller institution, but nonetheless, our size doesn't necessarily dictate our strength. In fact, one of the things that was recognized is that we're one of the best schools not only for doing research, when you look at the per capita funding, I'll give you an example, UAB this year, just talked to my good buddies last weekend, had $353 million in direct funds. They have 1,805 faculty doing research. We have roughly 60. When you divide our numbers by the number of faculty, we outperform their numbers. We're punching above our weight class, ladies and gentlemen. So the goal is to bring more fighters to the ring. I know that's a bad sports analogy, but that's kind of the way I roll. And so the other thing that's huge is that we are one of the best schools in serving rural areas. I think a lot of folks understand that as well as one of the best schools serving medically needy areas. And in fact, in the audience, we have Terry Davis, Connie Arnold, that have just led uh, the charge in that for many years. Uh, and we know the Cancer Center has been instrumental in that and will do so moving forward. One of the other things that we have is we have a tremendous amount of new equipment here. You probably don't know what all those things are, but basically these things that you see here don't exist anywhere in the state of Louisiana except for here. And that's important because when you talk about the thing called the NovaSeq 6000 Next Gen Sequencer, that's the thing that allows people to sequence yours or my DNA in less than a day. There's no other place in the state of Louisiana that can do that. We now have the tools from electron microscopy to next gen sequencing to mass spectrometry to go to uncharted territories in a very quick way. So we're really super, super excited about that. So what is the future, ladies and gentlemen? This is it. And I think everyone has heard about the medical education building, as well as the top floor will be the Center for Emerging Viral Threats, a dedicated facility that will house biosafety level class two, as well as class three research labs, as well as a training facility, facility or, or labs that you can bring students in to train them how to work with dangerous pathogens, so that we now become, in North Louisiana, the go-to spot for dealing with anything that deals with pathogen, pathogens or infectious disease. In addition to this, this facility will also have the latest technology for lecture halls. I know some of you have seen the markup before, uh, and it's going to be phenomenal. We'll be able to host people across the nation and indeed across the world. So the other thing to keep in mind is that right now, and I'm doing my shameless plug here, is the month of good for, give for good. So uh, we need some good. <laughs> and a way to do that is to donate uh, to Give for Good as well as to donate to the foundation, which will certainly help make this building reality. <clears throat> so I'm not going to say many words here because I, I think I've said too much. The one thing I hope you've come away with from this evening is that we are on a steep incline, ladies and gentlemen. This is a great time to be here at LSU Health Shreveport. This is a great time to actually be doing research. It's a great time to be part of an academic medical center with phenomenal clinicians and phenomenal faculty. Importantly, we want to make sure you and the community really know and feel welcome and understand. We thank you and the media for always being there for us. We love to visit with you. We love to tell you about the exciting new things. And sometimes it's a little mind numbing to us too because of the jargon, but we always want to help you break it down. Uh, and we also want to thank, and I see uh, Commissioner Carthon over there, right there in, in the corner. He is phenomenal. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here. And I, I said it at the beginning, and I'll say it at the end, it, we can't do this alone. It takes, it takes a community, it takes working together with partners and collaboration, uh, regardless of whether it's the commission or the city, LDH, Oshner, we're in this together. So it's gonna be a really exciting time, and uh, 
Last thing, as Neil Tyson DeGraw always says, stay curious, because that's what's going to drive research. Thank you for coming out, and have a good evening.